Welcome back to an Ohio Country Today. You know, we're standing here in, uh, at our farm, uh, out here in this wheat field. Uh, you know, as we look around, and probably you've noticed, uh, you're driving, uh, the wheat uh, is, is actually going to be early this year. Uh, early reports, actually, though, on the good note, is that the wheat quality appears to be good, and the yield could be pretty, uh, pretty good if you've got a pretty good stand. Uh, although some of the wheat fields we know uh, suffered from water damage last fall, while many of those were, were uh, destroyed and planted to another crop this spring, there's still some of those out there. This particular field of wheat, though, is excellent. Uh, uh, you know, if you remember, we've done segments on, on what, how drainage could pay. This field is systematically tiled every 40 feet. And uh, obviously, by looking at the wheat crop, you can see that uh, uh, that, that uh, soil management and, and uh, tiling pays. One thing you need to do keep in mind, though, with the wheat crop, because of the price difference this year, uh, if you've got crop insurance and you've got the revenue product, it could be very, you could very easily have a claim even harvesting an above average crop or harvesting above your insured bushels. So you want to make sure that uh, when you get done harvesting your wheat that you, you take a look at that uh, based on, on how they're going to determine the value of the wheat product uh, in July based on the September futures. They're going to take the average rolling monthly trading average of September wheat futures in July. So you want to keep that in mind if you've got revenue coverage on your wheat. You know, we have also uh, been looking and, and uh, there's been several articles published as recently as today, as a matter of fact, uh, on the uh, dry weather. Interesting fact, uh, when we did our crop insurance seminars, Ed Keezer, our meteorologist from, from Columbus, uh, had spoken at the seminars, and this was in February, and it indicated that we would probably see above average temperatures and below normal precipitation. In February, we said that couldn't be possible because we've had way, way too much rain. It still hadn't stopped raining. But look today, you know, we hope that Ed's not right, but uh, as, the, as the 6 to 10 day and the 30 day forecast are playing out, it appears that we are going to have above normal temperatures and below normal precip precipitation. Uh, for the for the upcoming 30-day period at least. Finally, as the wheat crop is concerned, you know, obviously as this matures in the next few weeks, uh, you do need to be looking for uh, maybe a possibility yet of some armyworms. Uh, however, the, 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 the wheat is getting probably mature enough that they might not bother it unless you've got some, some greener wheat yet. Uh, and uh, be uh, looking out for uh, the, the wheat to be early and be ready to harvest way ahead of schedule. It probably will fool you in the next couple of weeks uh, when it'll be ready. So, you know, the other thing that you might want to, although we have no idea uh, whether it'll exist or not, we've experienced issues with the vomitoxin uh, in the wheat in the years past. So uh, when you deliver your wheat to the elevator, you might just want to keep that sample uh, a little bit in a bag just in case that would be an issue too when you deliver your wheat to your local elevator. You know, we were talking about the wheat earlier uh, and how it's probably going to mature and be ready to harvest a couple of weeks earlier. Well, the same is to be said for uh, you know, corn and soybeans, and we're out here in, a, in the cornfield here, uh, and our field that we planted, as a matter of fact, on April the 13th, uh, it's not even the 4th of July and this corn's knee high. Uh, you know, it was timely planted. Uh, this field, uh, we have an excellent stand. Uh, we have also applied, uh, uh, as it's time for the first treatment of fungicide um, to, to part of this uh, field as well. Uh, it seems to have uh, really been taken, taken off even in the drier weather. Uh, you know, something that was in the corn newsletter uh, from Ohio State University uh, today was uh, be looking out for armyworms. As I indicated, they normally would be in the wheat field, but they've indicated uh, that they've seen them in the pasture fields and uh, as well as attacking the corn plants. Uh, the armyworm uh, will not bother soybeans. They might nibble on them, but they'll, they don't like the taste of them apparently. So, you know, they're kind of picky about what they eat. But uh, uh, the army worm can strip a field of corn fairly quickly. So if you, if you think you see army worms in your neighbor's pasture, you see army worms anywhere else, you're going to want to be uh, taking a look at your cornfields uh, to, uh, to check for that pest. And really the only effective treatment is to spray insecticide uh, on your cornfield at that point in time. Uh, you know, this spring we've also had, uh, unlike this field where we have a perfect stand, uh, and I think every seed must have germinated just about that we put in the ground, we did have a lot of replant claims uh, this spring uh, for corn and soybeans. Um, 
not so much corn, a few, uh, where, where some of our clients received an extreme amount of rain in 15 or 20 minutes, a couple inches in 15 or 20 minutes in spots uh, that literally just um, <coughs> cemented the ground over and the corn couldn't come up. Uh, as a reminder, if you think you've got to do some replanting, which it's not really too late to replant corn yet, if you've got some thin spots, um, you need to call your agent uh, before you uh, do that. Um, we've also noticed uh, this year <coughs> that uh, uh, with the drier weather that the uh, corn root we were digging up and uh, just to see how deep they were rooting down already and the roots infrastructure on these corn plants is already very, very deep uh, given, the, uh, given the dry weather uh, and the uh, indication that we are uh, our topsoil moisture. I saw a map this morning uh, put out by FC Stone on the overlay and that um, uh, our soil moisture is below 50% uh, in the topsoil already. Uh, kind of early for that to be depleted, but uh, uh, these, these corn plants are uh, rooting very deeply right now. You know, one other thing, just as a reminder, as we go forward uh, uh, here uh, in, the, in the month of June, uh, you need to be inspecting your fields and checking for those, uh, for those pests. Uh, obviously, we haven't had enough rain to, to cause some of the issues with some of the, some of the, the blight and, the, and the, uh, so on and so forth, but uh, the armyworms, I think, could be a, a big issue if it continues to be dry and their, their feedstuffs uh, kind of dry up. Uh, and just be mindful that, you know, if you're uh, wanting to be applying your foliar feed, you should be doing that now uh, as well. Tossle time, you want to make sure that you, if you're going to put fungicide on, that you uh, get your fungicide applied timely as well. Uh, I was talking to an applicator or a custom applicator, and if you think you're going to want to be putting fungicide on at tassel time, you need to be talking to your supplier now because that will be done with airplane, and it's going to be, uh, uh, there's a lot of acres that are going to be sprayed that way, and you need to be getting your name on the list so that that fungicide gets put on timely for you at that time. You know, we've talked about the wheat crop and the corn crop and, uh, you know, obviously another huge crop for us here in Ohio uh, uh, is soybeans. Uh, and right here we're in this uh, field of beans, uh, once again on my farm. Uh, these beans uh, were planted right at April the 20th or 21st. Um, and uh, we've got a, a very good stand, excellent emergence. Uh, and these beans, uh, despite the dry weather, are, uh, are growing and uh, uh, rooting down uh, quite well. Um, you know, we did have quite a few replants though, uh, and you might want to be out looking in your fields because we've seen quite a few soybeans uh, that um, were planted and then they're laying in dry dirt, uh, attempted to germinate, and then uh, uh, didn't have enough moisture to make it. So those seeds are not gonna produce a plant uh, and there's still plenty of time to be replanting your soybeans, so you need to be out inspecting those. Uh, one thing that you can do to find out whether, you know, those soybean seeds that you see landing in dry dirt are going to germinate is uh, gather up a representative sample, different spots through the field, dig up those dry, those soybeans out of the dry dirt, uh, lay them on a paper towel, a moist paper towel, and then put a moist paper towel on top. Don't let the paper towel dry out. Uh, and see what your germination percentage is on those. Uh, if, they, if they swell up and you get a, a nice little white uh, root coming out of them, they're gonna grow. If, if you don't, uh, if, they, if they don't, then they'll shrivel up and those uh, soybeans uh, will not produce a plant for you. So I encourage producers to get out and take a look, walk through their fields, because there are a lot of soybeans that were planted uh, in May that are laying in dry dirt and might not germinate. Uh, and if you've got crop insurance, you have replant coverage, and I would highly recommend that you take advantage of that. Um, these soybeans, um, as you can see, we have an excellent stand, um, uh, and uh, these are uh, um, a, a three point, a three seven variety, uh, so they'll be a little bit longer maturing uh, soybean. Um, things that we're gonna need to be watching out for uh, is uh, obviously checking our weed pressure, um, there was, once again, uh, Jim Berline had written an article about uh, because of the early planted soybeans, uh, don't delay too long to apply your glyphosate, assuming that you can do one trip. Um, he cautions against that because if you start walking out in these fields, once again, you need to do some scouting and see if you've got those small little weeds uh, growing in your field. 
If you want to find out a little bit more information about the topics we discussed today with corn and soybeans and wheat, uh, Ohio State puts out a very good newsletter. It's called the Corn Newsletter, edited by Glenn Arnold. Uh, you can find that on their website at ag.ohiostate.edu. So, uh, you know, you can go there and find out a little bit more information. Or you can go to our website at inohiocountry.com. We'll be back with more right after this.